I'm going to show you a battle of the generations from round six of the Chess Olympiad. It's also a top of the table clash too. It's from the match between Poland and Ukraine. Both teams maximum on maximum points. And we have Jan Krzysztof Duda, just 20 years old, a real rising star in the chess world, against Vasily Ivanchuk, 49 years old and incredibly experienced. And we know he's capable of beating anyone on his day. So let's have a look. Board one in this Poland-Ukraine match. Duda opens with the English and it's a kind of Grunfeld, but the pawn isn't on d4, but it's very, very similar. It can transpose to a Grunfeld proper at any moment with d4, but queen b3, that drives the knight away first. Black doesn't really want to take here, and then there's an option to play queen takes, and black certainly doesn't want to play f6. That's pretty horrible. So instead the knight drops back to b6 and only then white claims the center. So we have a, an interesting situation where white has control of the center with this pawn on d4 and pretty decent development and black has to try and strike out with one of these moves at some point. And there's also a chance for the moment to attack the queen. That goes to a3. Now it looks a little bit vulnerable on that square, but actually after knight c4, queen b4, and the queen is actually perfectly safe there. Ivanchuk castles and e3. So white is pretty solid. Black develops. So this could be a move fairly soon to strike out at white center and then black has potentially two beautiful bishops though all these bishops in in grunfeld positions one on e6 and one on g7 were always known as botvinnik bishops he won some very nice games with the bishops on on those squares but rook d1 is typical move in this kind of position to restrict that pawn break of course the rook goes opposite the queen and that makes life a bit more difficult for black to break. C6 and, and that of course prevents d5 in, in, in some positions. Now very interesting, instead of just developing this bishop and getting castled, Duda strikes out straight away. He thought for well over half an hour on that move. Um, and, and it's a very tricky position. In fact, this has been seen before. And bishop d5, for example, played by Grishuk, is possible. But very quickly, Ivanchuk played the bishop to f5. And this sets a very nasty trap. Let's have a look. e4, the natural move, played by Duda. Bishop g4, attacking the rook. Now, it looks completely natural in this position to play f3 attacking the bishop. The bishop is running very short of squares. You've got to think, well, yeah, what's what's happening here? It's, isn't this great for white? There's a fantastic move. E5, a typical Ivanchuk move, actually. He spots these kind of dynamic possibilities straight away. Um, pawn takes pawn, and only then h6. So while this bishop is in a bit of trouble, so is this knight. It's running short of squares. And, well, let's say this. Queen moves. And because e5 has, has been played, then that gives black a, a superb square for the knight. And black has very good piece play there. You have to think what is happening with the king. Now, that's a very complicated tactical line. Needs great calculation. Um, but let's come back to this position, but f3, definitely a mistake. Uh, Duda realized that and played bishop e2. So this was exchanged and knight takes. 
So you can see that this knight is now free to come back. So for example, after h6, the knight can just drop back to f3. And white has maintained the nice center. That's the important thing. And black is pretty cramped. I really like that bishop here, which prevents the queen from stepping off the back rank. So in this position, Ivanchuk played queen e8, sidestepping the, the rook here and clearly looking to break with e5. So this is an interesting moat. You know, how, how does white um, play against this? You know, if you, you could castle, but yeah, e5, as I said, will liberate black's position. But Duda swung the queen across, across the board. So it was here and he moves it all the way to h3. Fascinating idea. With this knight away from f6, then obviously h6 needs protection. And playing h6 isn't very attractive because this pawn front is weakened. You can see straight away this is on pre's. So Ivanchuk had to play h5. King h7 certainly doesn't look very pleasant when there's a um, possibility to give check like this at some point. So h5. And this is crunch time again. We could castle here. Of course, we need to bring our king out of the center. But then e5. And again, once this break takes place, then actually this solves... Uh, Black's problems. So what did Duda play? Well, he played an extraordinary move, actually, a move which is really anti-positional, but is in fact very well motivated. He played pawn to e5, which looks horrible, considering that white gives away the d5 square for this knight. But the idea is to prevent this break. So and, and, and it squashes black's pieces. You can see these pieces aren't so good. Um, it's all about restricting black. And, and also the queen doesn't look very well placed on e8 if the break doesn't take place. So you give something, you get something. You give this square, but you've really restricted the rest of black's pieces. And white can use the space advantage to attack. And Duda now really goes for it. He plays g4. So it's just throwing everything at the king now. Really important. Uh, <clears throat> because if you're going to give that square away, then you can't mess around. You've just got to go for it. g4. So if this is taken, then... That makes room for the h-pawn to advance, or possibly even just dropping back and, and playing knight g5, getting in on h7. So g4 just played. Ivanchuk found uh, quite a remarkable defensive idea, actually. And, and this is to, so typical of him that he, he, he calculates so deeply, so sharply. Queen c8, very creative. So the queen... It's hardly imaginable that it, it uh, has some kind of bearing on the queen on h3 when there are two pieces uh, blocking that diagonal. But watch what happens if pawn takes pawn, then knight takes e5 and magically the position is transformed. Because if queen takes queen, then knight takes knight to check and only then recapture here. And that's obviously um, winning for black. Let's go back. So after queen c8 here, queen h4 from Duda. So he spotted the tactics. And if pawn takes pawn, then this is just crushing. Threatens queen h7 mate, and then e6 just blows up the position. Once this one goes, then we can check and come here, and it's, it's fatal. So queen h4 still looks really nasty for black. But once again, Ivanchuk found a way to cling on in this position. He played rook d8. And after pawn takes pawn, he just dropped the knight back to f8. So that little shuffle of pieces has actually given him um, a little bit of room to manoeuvre. So, for example, the queen 
now it has some kind of influence over this diagonal. Now, tricky choice for Duda actually. Do you advance this pawn? You could play h6, um, but then you have to ask yourself what happens next? Sure, it's good for white, but it's not so easy to break through quickly. So Duda played in a more pragmatic way. He decided to exchange on g6, even though it brings this knight into the game, attacking a queen, and just drop the queen back. But at least now he has a very clear plan. He would like to advance that h-pawn to push away the knight. Queen comes to f5, attacking the bishop, and the bishop drops all the way back to c1. And now this is a strong threat. So, uh, for example, after knight b4, black actually doesn't have time to create counterplay like this because h4 and h5 is just very strong. So if Anchuk plays king f8, and now h4, and then he blocks with the queen. I think looking at the clock times, I think the players were beginning to run short of time here. And yeah, some of these moves um, are probably not the absolute best, but they're kind of pragmatic moves. Let me explain a little bit. So, of course, you want to shift that queen from h5. So Duda played queen g2 in order to make room for the knight to come to g3. That's one possibility. You could also play rook g1. And if, let's say, c5 to get counterplay, then queen h3, followed by rook g5. It's very hard to know in a game which of these is best. But queen g2 is pretty sensible. And Ivanchuk runs with the king. If knight g3, then queen g4, um, followed possibly by knight f4. Black is still just about in the game. Knight g5 played bishop h6 and here I think Duda has a very strong possibility but in order to play it you need to calculate pretty well and I suspect that uh, he didn't have the time to uh, calculate um, calculation needs time basically and if you're running short of time then it's what you play a pragmatic move but e6 looks very strong so for example if pawn takes pawn then knight g3 and <clears throat> yeah this the queen could perhaps come to here well the, the queen is attacked um, if here then then f3 is is strong um, what else we got uh, f6 knight comes here now it starts to get tricky because um, knight f4. I mean, it, this this should be should be good for white, but uh, there, there's basically a lot to calculate here. Um, there's also queen takes e2 check, and then knight here, which would transpose into an endgame. In fact, this endgame is very very good for white because we have this in between check and take here and in fact uh, white is winning this really easy to get rid of the pawn on f7 it's necessary to exchange here but that exchange would provide white with two connected pass pawns not too good so e6 looks like the right move but instead Duda played something that was very sound, very pragmatic. You know, he ruled out any tricks here. You know, he couldn't, obviously, short of time, he couldn't be certain about the outcome of that endgame. So decided just to play queen f3. Exchanging queens. So now he goes into an endgame, a clear pawn up. And with a pretty simple plan. Bishops exchanged. His plan, of course, is to ram that h-pawn up the board f6 from Ivanchuk, king d2, so that's kind of guarding against potentially a knight coming in here, 
uh, and maybe the king can step up. But also, of course, it's making room for the rook to come over like this. <clears throat> and here, Ivanchuk just blunders. He's a pawn down, clear pawn down, and, and things are not looking great. I mean, the knight can come in here, um, but actually, it's best to in this position to not to exchange that that knight actually blocks counterplay here, and just keep pushing that pawn. And, and White is a clear pawn up with a clear plan. That's the important thing. But in the game, Ivanchuk played rook h8 and this lost immediately to e6 check so if king takes pawn here Ivanchuk resigned if, if king takes pawn then rook takes knight obviously and if the king steps that way then it walks into a pin very nasty indeed so there we go the younger generation win out that battle and I have to say I, I realised that Maybe some of White's moves at the end there weren't the absolute best. But still, Duda kept control. That's the most important thing if you're running short of time. And I think he outplayed uh, Ivanchuk convincingly in that game. That victory helped Poland to uh, win over Ukraine. That's a fantastic result for them. Um, in the other top encounter... Azerbaijan defeated the Czech Republic, so there are now just two teams on maximum points, Azerbaijan and Poland, and they meet in the next round. USA had a good day. They smashed Bosnia-Herzegovina, and they are now in third place, just a point behind those top two teams, and they play Croatia in the next round, and that's a pretty good pairing for the USA, so uh, they're they're still well in it, and there are still five rounds to go as well. Hope you enjoy uh, the coverage, our coverage of uh, the Olympiad. Don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, just click on the button up there. It's free to subscribe, and if you'd like to join the inner circle and like to support us on Patreon.com, Powerplay Chess, then do check out the link above there, as well as the uh, Olympiad playlist as well. You'll find all the links up there somewhere in the description or wherever. Thanks a lot.